sauce gang and welcome back to the channel hot sauce beats here with another dope game theory reaction that is right matt pat has just dropped a brand new video and this time we're going down the little spookier side of games and that is you are not the hero of poppy playtime for project playtime now the last time we reacted to one of his theories on poppy playtime it legit got scary it got a little bit of spookiness going on with it so I know this is gonna be the same and I am beyond hype for this fam. But before we jump in this video, make sure you show Matt Pat over at Game Theory some love by subscribing to his channel. And if you enjoyed my reaction, please help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free and it greatly helps out the channel. But enough talking, let's get to reacting and roll that ball mass intro. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Let's get spoopy. Let's get spoopy right now. Huh. We are a failed breed created against our will only to labor. <laughs> We're already starting off spoopy. Turns. Slaves given life by others only to have none of our own. And now they try to make more of us. No. Get up. Sounds like the Joker. No. Need to smile more. <laughs> Go! Stop them! Feed your hunger! Slake your thirst! If we can be born on their terms, wow, they Chad, can that's die really on ours! Bro, calm down! <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game, Game Theory. Theory! Where buttons are gonna Let's light up go. randomly on screen right now. Press them as fast as you can to play. Alright, ready? Green, red, yellow, green, blue. Blue, it's a blue, game blue. Theory. Subscribe? Huh? How'd that get in there? Wait, that's that's we not a button on the Matt screen. Pack. Oh, Come on, bro. it's below the video. You know? Well, to finish the game, you know what you got to do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Poppy Playtime. The game that continues to throw us some curveballs. Is Poppy helping us or not? Are these living toys made from orphans or not? Am I getting weird feelings for mommy long legs, or is that just my normal mommy issues cropping up? You know, Probably the usual both. questions. But today's curveball is anything but usual, as Mob Games decide to surprise us all not with the drop of chapter three but rather with the reveal of its brand new spin-off title game. project playtime a multiplayer survival i saw the uh the trailer for this looks pretty dope level game where you can literally play as mom spaghetti eminem would be so proud in the game you be. and your friends act as reason vomit on my sweat already mom spaghetti Source extraction <laughs> specialists head into Playtime Co. to collect the parts that'll allow us to build giant living toys. But things aren't as simple as just playing a bunch of rounds as Simon says. The whole time you're solving puzzles, you'll be hunted by one of the game's yeah. monsters. Huggy Wuggy, Mommy Long Legs, and the newcomer, Boxy Boo. My honest reaction? It's incredibly Boxy fun Boo. to play. The skins are awesome, the emotes are fun, the puzzles find the right level of difficulty. Overall, the team and I had a blast playing it over on GT Ooh. Live, even if there were a few- Yeah, we really need to start watching GT Live more. Um, I think we're actually gonna do that. I, you know, you know, we're hooked on game theory here. We're hooked on Matt Pat, um, and the fact that I always forget that he plays games on GT Live. I think we gotta do it, and I know he's also been uh, watching like a lot of fun naf on there too. So you bugs that needed to be worked out, as Tom would very quickly come to discover. Is that you? Oh yeah. Hey bud, it is you. Stuck. It is me. <laughs> Look at your little army. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, you can still hit me. Oh, don't worry about him though. Tom would make sure he had his revenge in the next round. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. No, I have a toy part, Tom. No, I got a toy come part. On, Tom. Tom. Come on, Tom. I had a toy part. I had a toy part. Boo, Tom. Everyone was all collecting. Boo, Tom. 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 Like I said, it's a really fun game. But of course, we don't care about whether something is fun or not on this channel. We are here for one thing and one thing only. The lore. Because like it's a game theory, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. I get a little out of hand sometimes. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mob I'm games sorry. delivered big time here. When you first boot up the game, you're thrown into a tutorial which is full of this stuff. Lore drops left and right. And then when you've played the game enough, you'll also unlock a lore-filled VHS tape, which means it's time for us to head Ooh, back into the lore cursed VHS toy box, tapes here. where today I'm about to prove to you that the scariest, Poppy. most threatening figure pulling the strings in this game may actually have been the hero all along. That's right, folks. It's classic game theory what? time. The bad guy wasn't the bad guy after 
after all. Yeah. In Project Playtime's VHS yeah. tape, we're introduced to a new character named Harley Sawyer, known simply as the Doctor. That sounds pretty evil already. Not that kind of doctor. This guy doesn't have himself a box that's bigger on the inside. Instead, he has a plan that involves being bigger on the outside. Now we're understaffed. Safety protocols are being abandoned. Oh, yeah, listen to his voice. He's calm. evil already. We need to deal with all Doctors of these are always evil in games, dude. I'm in movies. Here now with a solution. Giant toys. Giant. We can increase our workforce and simultaneously decrease the number of lawsuits and people on our payroll if the people we have working aren't people. Huggy Wuggy Mommy I mean, that's true. I mean, what robot's gonna sue you? They might kill you, but they probably won't sue. That's not how they get even. They don't want your money. They want your heart beating outside of your chest. Legs and Boxy Boo, these jumbo-sized living boo. toys, they're all <laughs> part that, of this dude. initiative. In chapter two, we learned that Mommy Long Legs was used to help supervise the kids playing around in the game station, but I don't think any of us really took the implications of that seriously. These giant toys were actually made with the express purpose of working in the factory, lifting boxes, patrolling hallways, Boxy cleaning boo. toilets, and knowing this, it actually helps the first ever VHS tape we hear in the game make a lot more sense. So, trespasser, just to make you aware, while we pride ourselves primarily on our high quality toys and excellent child care, we also pride ourselves on our security. For example, this facility is full of hidden motion triggers, which, once set off, will turn on the factory's emergency alarms and directly contact the authorities. And that's one of the more tame aspects of our security system. No spoilers. He's talking about we might release the big toys on you too with jagged teeth like this. Huggy. Huggy is literally the factory security. Step aside, Fritz Smith. There's a new night guard uh, in town and he is no. tall and blue and fuzzy. For the first time in the series, we have confirmation as to why these toys actually came into being. So the next question is when. As we start to piece together a timeline of events for the factory, be helpful to know when this initiative started. Well, Project Playtime actually gives initiative. us a lot of information on that. Boxy Boo's description tells us that he was based on a toy from 1966. Huggy oh, wow. Wuggy's description is similar, telling us that the giant monster was based on a toy created back in 1984. 1984 but huh? Mommy Longlegs' description actually works no, a bit 1999 different. See, it makes it clear that in her case, the toy didn't come first. Instead, the giant mommy that we saw throughout Chapter 2 was created in 1991 in an effort to use the company's new elastic plastic. And eventually she became, quote, so popular that Playtime Co. created a toy. It's just like a, a toy back in the day called Stretch Armstrong. Literally same thing. It's boop, 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 boop the sound it makes when you have stretchy arms if you didn't know that just in case if you didn't know. out of her and took it to market that tells us that the bigger bodies initiative had to have started prior to her creation in or before 1991 and considering that she's experiment 1222 <laughs> and that huggy was 1170 it had to have been significantly earlier than that probably around 1990 and that's not all the timeline information that we get here for more we turn our attention to the project playtime arg that's right mob games oh. heard my cries for more interesting clues i really wanted to do a theory just on these cardboard cutouts, expecting there to be some sort of hidden lore inside the glitchy audio. The perfect place to hide some lore. Mob games. Wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge. And so they decided to raise me an entire ARG. The ARG wow. itself is actually super interesting and really complex. Unfortunately, most of it was teasing the new character for this game, Boxy Boo. And by the time we managed to solve it, the teaser was already out and the game wasn't that far oh. off either. Plus, the ARG has now been wiped from the you. internet, so it doesn't really make sense for us to cover it anymore. But if you do want to see the the ins and outs of it, which are really cool. I highly recommend watching Sheep Rampage's video series on it. They were covering all the puzzles and solutions as they were happening in real time. So oh, definitely really? worth a watch. Good job. It's a long series, but it's a good series. So boom, just solved your afternoon of entertainment. Boom. Today though, we're just gonna boom. be focusing on the details that matter for us moving forward. During the ARG, yeah, we heard from a new bro. character named Rowan Stoll, an employee that was initially concerned about Huggy Wuggy being used to watch children. Hello, Mr. Pierre. I know you don't want to hear any more about this. I get it. Sounds like a bad joke, huggy wuggy staring at children. If some creep is hiding nanny cams in our mascot's eyeballs, then it's something that needs to be taken seriously. The next video we see of him though, he's changed his tune. I just want to apologize. I was wrong. Nothing weird is, is going on here at all. Clearly, he figured out that something more sinister was going on, and that the living Huggy security <laughs> system was a feature, like, not a bug. I need to be in scared. that video, he scared. tries to throw everyone off the scent that he knows anything. I'm not looking into it anymore. And I mean, not that there was anything to look into in the first place. Smooth, Rowan, very smooth. Clearly, Playtime's aware that he knows too much. And he's digging that grave, digging 
digging that grave, digging that grave. And wants to <laughs> silence him. But Rowan You're screwed, bro. Plan. I think I'm going to die. I had to pretend to see nothing so the company would leave me alone. I have scheduled the company's... The, the servers, the security to be shut down for 60 minutes of maintenance. While security is out, I'm going to release everything and run. Yeah, I run think they're going to kill me first. And sure enough, it, that's exactly what happens. Rowan goes down into the basement and stands face to face with Boxy Boo, who does what toys do best, eats him alive. Notice the dates on all of his videos, though. 1991. So, for Rowan to have seen a giant huggy watching children and then get eaten by a giant Boxy Boo, it means the Bigger Bodies program was up and operational by March 30th, 1991. Dang Boxy Boo got him! can also add to the timeline nom, when Project nom, Playtime itself takes place. In Project Playtime, one of the toys that we're tasked with assembling is a large-scale boo Boogie bots based on the games based on the games oh, sorry based on the games NFTs ugh. we know that the toy boogie bot was made in 1993 Darn NFTs. the company had to still be functional as a toy factory at <clears> least <throat> until then considering that this was their last major toy made though we can assume that the place shut down shortly thereafter we hear this event happening in chapter one when the toys begin their rampage today's events are no doubt in relation to him most likely then project playtime takes place sometime in the decade prior to chapter one the time oh. after everyone went missing but before we return to the toy factory to explore its mysteries playtime code needed special Specialists to go into the factory on their behalf to allow them to continue the bigger bodies initiative despite the monsters that are now roaming the hallways freely but what's interesting is that up until now we've assumed that these monsters ah dude just something i don't know i don't know if it's like the it just i think it's i think the reason why i think this is the scariest one is because i hate spiders and just her long legs and just like no and just the 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 fake smile dude it just freaks me out are being driven purely by their hunger, but Project Playtime reveals that that's not the case. They are trying to build more toys, more like you. It has to be stopped. This mysterious so voice is hear? talking to Huggy, and presumably the other giant toys throughout the factory, getting them to work together in order to feed themselves, but also to stop those who are trying to make the Bigger Bodies initiative a success. Oh Whoever this God, mysterious voice dude. is, they do not want more Boxy monsters Boo's to be terrifying. created. But who could it possibly be? Fortunately, I didn't have long to wait for an answer, because during my playthrough on GT Live, I got a loading screen that told me exactly who it was. I got a loading screen. Which one did you get? I got uh, Mommy Longlegs being puppeteered oh. by oh, 1006. One. Yeah, mine is Huggy just chasing people. And 1006 is, I think, terrifying, dude. Those hand daggers. Yeah! Well, so you definitely got the interesting one. You got the nice. lore there. I got the lore, see? Experiment lore! 1006 has been one of the franchise's biggest mysteries. Each installment reveals a little bit more a about little bit. the first Not chapter much. showed us that he was a prototype to all these toy experiments, that he had a digestive tract but didn't require food to survive. The second chapter revealed him to be incredibly intelligent, tampering with cameras and alarm clocks in like order to smart. sabotage the scientists doing experiments on him. He even showed up at the end of chapter two to drag oh, a lifeless right. mommy long legs that's away. Right. But his end goal, his motivation has largely been a mystery. Thanks to this tutorial, though, we now know what he wants. He's trying to stop the experiments. He's trying to stop people being used to make these toys. That's why he helped to release all the giant toys before the events of Project Playtime. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation we'll to him. We'll see. Absence I, was a flaw in the I don't think you can have hands looking like that and be a good guy. Negative. Bad. The, the puppets here. Literally the puppeteer! The, the head bad person! Scientific process. The giant toys no. are organized. They're working together. And it's because this one creation is able to psychically talk to them all. Again, this gives that. more clarity to something good, that we though. heard back in chapter one. Coordination and cooperation is evidently within his skill set. And while he doesn't want more toys to be made, he is taking care of all the monsters that already exist. The are hungry. hungry. It's feeding time! Get up. He's keeping them fed. He's keeping them alive. And most importantly, he's keeping them safe. These people didn't ask to be turned into toys. This isn't what they wanted. And while 1006 can't fix them, he can keep them alive. He has good intentions. Even though he's got himself a scary voice and a creepy metal claw hand, I think he's the good guy. He might actually be the hero of this story. And his heroism isn't just limited to protecting the monsters. We know based on documents from chapter two that he's also actively trying to save kids. One thing everyone put together 
fairly quickly after Chapter 2's release was the fact that Playtime Co. seemed to be testing children in order to put them into the perfect toy. Specifically, we see two documents outlining the performance of Michaela Hyssop as the researchers try to pair this girl with Candy Cat. But one of the things that all of us overlooked was how these performance assessments ended. Neither document is finished. Both of them trail off as the pen scribbles off the page. What's more, there's blood on the paper. It suggests that not just once, but twice, researchers were killed while testing Michaela. And Michaela actually sees it coming. At the end of oh, both wow, the documents, wow, wow, wow. while undergoing the statue, game, we read that Michaela is distracted by something else. Presumably this is Drawing the giant monster away. that's coming to kill the researchers. This tells us then an important detail. The prototype is saving these kids as many times as it takes. Whether it was Mommy Longlegs coming in to kill the researchers or the prototype himself, we know that the prototype's behind it Dude, because he's like... the just one puppeteering. Come on, bro! How's that not just utterly terrifying? And then, I mean, it's like robotics within the arm or with the actual human bones and stuff and blood and veins. Negative. All the big monsters. Not today, and he has repeatedly suckers. stepped in to save the kids. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a good guy to me. And he's oh. not only using the other monsters to save the kids, he's also using us. Remember that line I just showed you from the monster tutorial? The others are the others are starving. Get up. Those last two words, don't they seem familiar? Yep, the death messages from both chapters almost always end with those exact words, get up, which then results in us respawning. Up until now, we've been under the impression that two people have been speaking to us through these death screams. Mm. The lowercase words that are far more motivating, like we're almost there, or it's not over, being from Poppy, trying to get us to find her at the end of every chapter. And the second, uppercase words like innovation is key, thank you science, or he's loose, this is an emergency lockdown, being from either Elliot Ludwig or a scientist that was working on the project. But now, I don't think that's the case. Yes, there are two tones of messages, but almost all of them end with the exact same two words, get up. I think this is experiment 1006 trying to communicate with us. More See, dude, and again, this is, uh, I mean, just like, we're about two thirds of the way done with this. And this is always what Matt Pat does on his theories, man. You're just like, for roughly like the first half or so, you're always like, I don't know, man, this is a stretch. But then when he was talking about uh, them trying to put the experiment with Michaela, the fact that essentially both time the scientists were killed, but what that did was that saved whatever kid that they were experimenting with. So prototype 10, 1006, 1006. I mean, maybe it's so. And even here, like, I don't know. I think this part is also a stretch. But I mean, if you're trying to connect dots, which sounds like beep, beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, 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 boop. That's how it sounds when you're trying to connect dots. I can see it. I can see it because, I mean, if, uh, you know, nobody believes in coincidences, especially when you're dealing with lore, right? There's no such thing. So more lives are at risk than just yours. I, I He's trying it. to get us to help the trapped souls inside the factory, the ones that he himself has spent so long protecting. Why is it speaking to us in two different voices? Simple reason could be that some of his lines are just him repeating back all the things he heard when he was first created. The prototype has saved us. Isn't he wonderful? But there's actually another explanation. Think back to the end of chapter two. One of you died. You make me part of it. Mommy screams for her life, terrified of being a part of 1006, who drags her lifeless corpse away shortly thereafter. Broken toys end up being combined into the prototype, so maybe it's a way for him to keep the toys and the spirits inside of those toys alive. That would mean that 1006 now has multiple voices inside of him. The voices of all those toys that have perished and are now incorporated into his being, all of them trying to communicate with us at once. This, I suspect, is what okay. we're also seeing okay. in the new VHS tape of Project Playtime. It's starts off as normal text, but then switches to capital letters. Again, two very different tones present here. Near the end, we see the line, the bigger body's initiative will fail, which not only lines up with the motivations for one zero. And again, yes, that's prototype one zero zero six, not wanting them to build any more toys trying to save people. Okay. Zero six that we've just okay. discussed, but it also matches the exact words on the game's Steam page, except over there, it's written in a glitchy text. Now, while glitchy text doesn't necessarily prove that it's 1006, we have seen those death screens in the past use codes and corrupted text before. And a robotic monster trying to communicate in every way possible, ending up with text that appears glitchy, fits pretty nicely. Plus, there are also some frame-perfect messages in there that appear in the static of the VHS. One that says, save us, and another that says, upon and a sacrifice. 
sacrifice. Again, hidden messages, other Ooh, voices, I love hidden messages. trying to break through. But while I'm certainly excited to see what the prototype pulls out for us in future updates and what his role in the story is going to be going forward, there's still one major question here. Who is 1006? Yeah, we <laughs> All the giant toys that we've met thus far have been made from people. Mommy, because we've only gotten little bits so far through the games, like just little, little bits about prototype uh 1006 we don't know anything again this is all this is all speculative regardless of whether or not you're liking this theory it's a theory this is going off guessing and not 100 percent concrete facts it's uh the way that we are uh our perception of these facts long legs even got a know, name actually, anyway. marie Payne. so if 1006 is the prototype the one experiment that paved the way for all the others then surely he too has to be made from someone in our previous True. theories we came to the conclusion that orphans were being used to create these monsters they were tested in the game station and if they were considered fit for purpose they would get on the train and be sent to play care where they'd be experimented on and eventually turned into toys so was experiment 1006 just an orphan a random child that's now uh, after no, revenge no, no. a Definitely vengeful spirit if you will as much as I'd love to dunk on Poppy for riffing on another piece of FNAF lore, I don't actually think that's the case here. 1006 is incredibly intelligent, able to take control of the other toys, manipulate and trick the scientists in the toy factory, while later experiments like Huggy were described as obedient. These later be experiments the were made One of the from scientists, children the who could be trained and molded into what they needed to be, but the prototype was different. He was an adult, one we've gotten to know a lot about in recent chapters. I it. propose that 1006 is none other than the founder of the company, <laughs> Elliot Ludwig. Now, I'm not the first theorist to suggest this. Ever since the release of Chapter 2, it's actually been a fairly common theory. However, I really feel like now we have the evidence to hammer okay, this one home. Okay. We know that Let's Elliot Ludwig away. suffered a tragic loss in his family in the 1960s, presumably his daughter, who would then go on to be remade Come Poppy. Poppy. Yep. And throughout the game thus far, Elliot is always described as a family man at heart, and he's always giving credit for his Number business to the dad. children. Now, call me cynical, and maybe I've played just one too many indie horror games at this point, but I see stuff like that and I immediately think oh this guy's shady he's clearly killing the kids but nothing he ever says or does is outright evil or mean to children in any way instead it's trying to benefit children throughout the toy factory we see posters pushing employees to adopt and foster orphan children and while again my knee-jerk reaction is this guy is clearly using these orphan kids to make living toys I don't think it started that way if it did he wouldn't be outright encouraging employees to adopt but I mean didn't if I remember correctly didn't this start start because his daughter died and then this whole thing started to put his kid into poppy essentially to save his child right isn't that what started this again it's been a while since we've i don't know what it's been like six months since he's done a, a poppy playtime video so maybe or maybe four i don't remember but yeah, I want to say that's what started it all, right? And foster children like we see in the posters. That would be taking test subjects, potential living toys, away from the factory. No, I believe that Elliot did indeed have the best interests of the kids at heart. It was this new character, the Doctor, who took things in a dark direction. And he was able to yeah, do it the because doctors Elliot are always was evil. out of the picture. During the ARG leading up to Project Playtime, Clue Hunters found this memorandum from Rowan Stoll reminding employees about the need to keep quiet about confidential information. But in it, we get this line. Quote, nobody cares about your safety and security more than us. And as our great founder, Elliot Ludwig, always said, Playtime Co. is my family, and family looks after one another. Notice the tense that the letter uses. It's past tense. He is out of the picture by the time the whole Bigger Bodies initiative gets into full swing. So where did Which he go? Make sense In why chapter he's two, trying there's to a note on it. Elliot's desk about using poppy gel to bring dead rats back to life. That note is labeled Experiment 814. Almost 200 experiments prior to the prototype. Why would such an old note be sitting on his desk? We know at least another 400 experiments took place after this one. Surely memos about those later experiments would be at the top of the pile, but no, we find this old note. A note that, at the very end, mentions using larger subjects for the test. I think Elliot realized what was being proposed here and tried to shut the entire operation mm, down. However, think? Harley, the doctor, was determined. My name is Harley Sawyer. Evil. I'm called Evil. the doctor. When I look <laughs> at this company, <laughs> the doctor. Refit, 
I do not feel proud. Declining profits, failed experiments. He specifically calls out failed experiments. When Harley takes control, the experiments haven't been successful yet, just like we see with the rats and the poppy flowers. And so when Elliot stood in his way, there was only one thing to do. Use him as your guinea pig. That's why that was the last note on Elliot's desk. He never returned to the office. Harley could just oh. lock the door and no one would be any wiser. And so He's Elliot became busy. the first. He became the prototype. Now it was up to him to protect all those that he failed to protect as a human. Both the employees that are being turned okay. into monsters okay. and the children who are in the process of being I'm tested. Kind of and he's doing everything he can to stop it. Killing researchers that are testing kids, preventing more toys from being built in Project Playtime, and sending us a note to bring us back to the toy factory to investigate, and then continuing to encourage us to get up when we fail. But clearly his mission is incomplete and Poppy appears to be the final solution. There's a reason that Mommy captured her again in Chapter 2. Remember, she's following 1006's orders. I suspect that he needs to be reunited with his daughter in some way for his mission to be complete. Not exactly sure yet. Maybe it's just a creepy toy family reunion. But whatever it is, I bet we're gonna find out more in Chapter 3. You know, provided the new game Project Playtime doesn't make so much money that Mob Games suddenly pulls a Fortnite and stops pursuing the single-player campaign. That would never happen, right? <laughs> in the meantime, friends, remember, it's all just a theory. A GAME, game THEORY! theory. Let's go! For watching. And if you're still looking to get your poppy fix like the orphans at Playtime Co., you can always watch our prediction video for Chapter 3. You do not want to know what they're going to do with that gas mask. That video is on the left. Or, if you like people getting turned into monsters, you can always check out our video on Bendy and the Dark Revival. Here, Let's just Kat. say our Be leading here. lady, Audrey, may not be who you think she is. That video is over on the right. As Cause it's a game theory! Let me bring you in, Sauce Gang. God, I don't know. Like, I, sometimes these... Sometimes these are such a stretch, dude. But then Matt Pat and his team, they do such a great job at connecting dots and making these theories believable. As out, far out there as they are, they always find a way to connect it enough that you're like, well, I'll be dipped in cat poo. This might be true. That rhymed. I might be dipped in cat poo. That might be true. I don't know why I talk like that, but I did. So, but again, I mean, when you go back looking at all of it, I mean, really, what has prototype 1006 ever really done that's like bad? Other than just look super duper scary, you know, and people not wanting to become a part of it because it, you know, it takes parts to, you know, build itself. But then it's, he brought the point that he could just be doing that to keep their soul going and let them to keep going on and it would make sense that if the person that's inside of them is Ludwig or Elliot Elliot right Elliot I think it was the name and that's why Elliot's trying to stop uh you know from project playtime from you guys making more toys that's why he's telling um the other toys to stop because that's not what Elliot ever wanted to do so I, I'm kind of believing this. Let me know, chat. Let me know what you guys think. Um, and as usual, God, this this game. I think this game's up there with FNAF. I think this game actually might be a little like lore-wise might be scarier than FNAF, but FNAF has more jump scares and like instant scare. <coughs> so let me know what you guys think. But um, and make sure you show game theory matt pat over at game theory some love by subscribing to the channel and liking the original video and if you enjoyed my reaction please help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button it's absolutely free and it greatly helps out the channel enjoy the rest of your day and remember it's eat sleep and make beats and as usual be cut with it up and that's all i got boom i'm out oh gonna my love for the sauce game Come